the inventory and warehouse management pieces of that diagram. Okay, so that's really about uh, the relative sequence in which inventory and warehouse management operations take place. So here we are looking at, remember I earlier said inventory management and warehouse management are two different pieces but they are linked, right? So how is the linkage established? That's what this slide is about. Okay. So here you see you've got a client, you've got company code transportation, we'll come to later. You've got plants, you've got shipping points, and we already know that shipping points can straddle plants, meaning one shipping point can serve multiple plants. So that's why you're seeing the lines going from here to there. Uh, and then we see here that you've got a bunch of storage locations. Every plant has multiple storage locations. And the place where this all is connected to warehouse management is in SAP, you connect every storage location to a warehouse number. Okay, that's the connection. So you can link a storage location to a warehouse. Okay, so you can say this storage location is really part of this warehouse. Okay, so once you do that, that storage location comes under warehouse management. Okay. That's the that's the key linkage. So the way inventory management is connected to warehouse management is by connecting a storage location to a warehouse. Okay. So think about it this way. Let's say you've got you've got plants and you've got a massive warehouse by the side, right? And of course your items are all stored in the actual physical warehouse. Right, so you may divide that warehouse into many regions and say this is storage location 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Right, so your storage location is actually in that warehouse. So when you refer to a storage location, you're saying it's that region of the warehouse. Okay. So that's really how the connection comes about. So an area of the storage location, uh, area of the warehouse is what you would actually treat as a storage location. <laughs> okay. Um, <coughs> Okay, so now, uh, again, storage location number, we already spoke about it. It's the combination of the storage location and the plant. And one warehouse number can have multiple storage locations from multiple plants. Okay, not all the storage locations of one warehouse need to be from one single plant. Okay, so you've got storage locations from what plant one, and storage locations from this plant and this plant together in this warehouse. Okay. Now, in fact, yesterday, uh, Patrick, I think, uh, he was giving an example where in his company, uh, storage locations from across company codes go into the same warehouse. Okay. It's possible because a warehouse is usually a big entity. So you might think of everything as being in one big large warehouse which supply, which supports multiple company codes. It's perfectly possible. But in this example, we are not seeing it going across company codes, but that's again possible. Okay, that's one important point. Now notice that you've got most of the storage locations are under warehouse management. Some are not. That's also possible. Right? So just because you've got warehouse management active, it doesn't mean that every storage location will be under warehouse control. You may have some storage locations which are not controlled by warehouse. Right? So in those storage locations, when you have operations, you won't have this transfer request and transfer order. Those things won't happen for those. Okay? Okay, shipping point can be attached to multiple plants. That's what I've said earlier. <clears throat> okay, and also different storage locations from the same plant can be allocated to different warehouses. That's also possible, right? So for example, uh, we don't have that shown here, but it's possible that this storage location might have been allocated to this warehouse. It's possible. Okay, it's just a matter of, you know, it's, it's a physical thing as to where it is and how it's convenient, that's all. Okay, so now that we've seen the connection between inventory management and warehouse management, now we'll go and look at the actual structure of the warehouse management system itself. Right, detailed structure of the warehouse. Okay, so warehouse 
number, we refer to a warehouse as a warehouse number. A warehouse number has multiple storage types. Right? Storage type is just uh, an area which is which can store items with similar storage requirements. Right? So you may say, uh, you know, it, it's something. It's storage location for raw material, storage location for this thing, or you may say it's a storage location for uh, you know perishable items. Whatever. You know, those are different storage types. And then under storage types, you have several storage sections. Okay, several storage sections. One section might be, for example, uh, the refrigerated section, where you keep all the refrigerated items. And another example may be something, you know, whatever. Different requirements that warehouses have for breaking out the areas by function, by the kind of items they need to store and by the kind of environment that's required to store items okay uh, and there's uh, they are usually they also have within the uh, areas they have picking areas okay that is when picking is being done for various products they may keep a special area where all the picked items are first staged and from there they may be then packaged or whatever it is and then taken away okay so the, some, the you could have some storage uh, sections and some picking areas as well within the warehouse the lowest level, of course, is a storage bin, right? an actual place where things are kept. It's a storage bin, right? So you can see here the hierarchical organization. You've got the warehouse; it's got many storage types. Each storage type has many storage sections, and each section has many bins. Okay, so it's like how you find a book in a library. So they say it's on the third floor, in the fifth aisle, on the fourth shelf, the third, this thing from the top, whatever. What are picking areas again? Sorry. Picking areas are, you know, areas where, let's say you're picking items, right? You may want to pick the items and keep it in some area and then, you know, put them all together and then take it out. Okay, some such area. You could think of it as sort of a staging area between picking and uh, further operations. Okay, so how you break this up is based on your own conditions, your own technical, organizational and spatial criteria that you need. There is no hard and fast rule, but warehouse management experts will have something, something to say about that. Okay, um, So storage sections basically are bins with common characteristics. The example I gave earlier was a refrigerated section. Right, So all of them have common characteristics. Uh, so the picking areas or storage uh, uh, sections could also be interim storage areas. Okay, so for example, uh, one important interim storage area is a goods receipt section. Right, as soon as goods are received, you have to put them somewhere before they actually go into the interior of the warehouse. Right, so that could also be a goods receipt storage area, which could be a, a, a storage section. Yeah, it could be. It's just a temporary place. Before it goes inside, there's some area where you're putting it. Okay, it could be for advance and uh, non-advance. Advance is that it'll just come and go quickly, that's all. Okay, that's what I was talking about. Interim storage areas to link to inventory management. They get it, put it, then it goes. Or when you've picked it out from inside, you've kept it in a temporary area, they pick it and then do their thing. Uh, so, when you have a goods receipt and if uh, the storage location where you are trying to put it is under warehouse management, right? if it is not under warehouse management, there is no more work to be done. You receive the goods and then you just assume that it will be manually put away somewhere. But if it is under warehouse management, then we have to kick off the warehouse processes. Okay? So then the goods receipt process, what it will do? is it will generate a transfer request or a transfer requirement okay because the goods that have that are received have to be put away inside the warehouse so they'll put it in an interim storage area and then generate a transfer requirement to say this has to be moved into the warehouse in to a particular location or whatever okay or leave the location to the warehouse people so it has to be moved and then all the requirements accumulate and then, of course, they'll combine some of these requirements together, perhaps, uh, in an optimal way and generate a transfer order. 
Okay, so the transfer order is the document which authorizes really the actual movement because there's cost involved in moving things from place to place. The transfer order is what controls that. Okay. <clears throat> the transfer order, of course, will determine exactly where in the uh, warehouse it is supposed to go. So it will mention the storage type, section, and bin to which this thing has to be put away. And of course, once the transfer order is complete, whoever has performed it will enter a confirmation of the transfer order. Then we'll know this is done and we can assume that things are where they're supposed to be. But this whole process is kicked in only if the storage location, plant storage location combination, because storage location by itself doesn't mean anything, only if the plant storage location combination is under warehouse management. If it's not linked to any warehouse, then this whole step is not there. Then we assume that that is just a manual process. Okay. So when you do this, if the, if the combination is under warehouse management, then in the purchase order, you'll see that for that particular item, a tab appears for warehouse management. Okay, but that we would not have seen because usually in our clients, we don't have warehouse management installed. So we may not see that, but that tab will appear. <coughs> okay, and also the, the quantity of items in interim storage areas, it is shown as being in an interim storage area till it is actually moved into the warehouse. Okay, so this is the broad process that if goods are first received, put into an interim storage area and then put into the actual warehouse by a put away process. Okay, and as we've already seen, the movement is based on transfer request and a transfer, transfer requirement and a transfer order, not request, it should be requirement. Okay, as we've already seen, that's the organization of the, of the warehouse, storage type, storage section and bin. Okay, so that's about warehouse management. So the basic ideas of warehouse management are, first of all, that it's concerned with physical placement and physical movement of items. Okay, and most importantly, its linkage to the warehouse, to the inventory management operations occurs by a storage location being connected to a warehouse number. That is the key linkage between the two, right? So that whenever you're receiving goods or sending goods, you mention the storage location and plant, of course, and then we know exactly which warehouse we are talking about. So that is important. Uh, third aspect, of course, is the structure of the warehouse. You have storage type, you have storage area sections, and then you have bins. So that's another important point. And a final important point is the sequence in which warehouse and inventory operations are done. Okay, if we have advance notice, in other words, if we are doing the movement, whatever the movement is with reference to a delivery, then we do warehouse management first and then do inventory. But if you are not doing it with reference to delivery, we do inventory first and then we do warehouse. Okay, so that's really, those are all the key points. Yeah. One quick thing, warehouse number is the same thing as a plant number, right? No. Like, no, 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 it's totally different. It's totally different. It's a completely different entity. Distribution center. Yeah, they use a plant number. Well, they may keep the same number just for convenience. Okay. You know, in, in well, SAP. It's not intuitively the same number. No, no. It's, it's, this is totally different. It's a completely different entity. In fact, storage locations from multiple plants may belong to the same warehouse. All right. Okay. Okay. So that, that cannot be the case. Okay. So now. We finished the whole warehouse operations and there are those five, four or five points that I mentioned that you need to remember. Uh, now we are going to look at physical inventory procedures. Okay. Now physical inventory procedures are important because, you know, we may say we've got five, we had 500 units in stock and over the course of the last two weeks, 250 units have been used up. So there are 250 units in stock, right? But there may not be. For whatever reason, you may not have 250 units in stock. Right? Theft. Right? It, it could have got stolen. Or, uh, you know, our warehouse could be rat infested. <laughs> so they may have eaten up something. 
right? Or in some cases, like liquids and chemicals and so on, they can evaporate. So you thought you had so many gallons, but you don't have so many gallons. It's less because it's gone, right? So that is the physical inventory process is to reconcile the book number with the real number. Okay? You, yeah. No, book number is what we actually have on hand. That's what we are trying to reconcile. No, but we are only trying to... No, no, no. We are only trying to uh, reconcile what is supposed, what we are supposed to have with what we really have because some, you know, unexpected things have happened. It's got lost, it's evaporated, those kinds of things. Okay, we're not, we're not doing MRP or anything. We're just trying to say, okay, we thought we have 500, but if for whatever reason we have less, I'll, you know, uh, I'll face up to reality. Okay, it's just a reality check. Okay, that's all it is. So obviously, what we need to do, uh, it has an, it has implications. You know, you want to uh, correct incorrect stock quantities, so that you know you you're dealing with reality rather than some imagined number in your database. And for accounting purposes, also, you have to reflect accurately what you have on hand, right? If you think you have 500 units on stock, but you really have only 300, then you are overstating your assets. So you have to tone it down. Okay, that's that's the real purpose of physical inventory uh, procedures. Okay, uh, now physical inventory procedures are based on what is called as a stock management unit, SMU. Okay, a stock management unit. A stock management unit is defined by a combination of all of these. Right? What do I mean by a stock management unit? Let's take a very simple example. Okay, let's say we've got a warehouse and we've got the shelf out there and there's a whole, uh, let's say there's a bundle of 50 packets of Kellogg cereal lying in one area. Right? It's all shrink wrapped and it's kept there. That might be a stock management unit. Right? You're, not, you're not managing each box of Kellogg cereal separately. You've got a whole bunch of them sitting somewhere. You manage that as a unit. Right? Then the same product, there might be another stock management unit sitting somewhere else. Okay, So stock management unit is physically set of units that are managed together. That's all is a stock management unit. Okay, So a stock management unit can be defined by these characteristics. Of course, it can be defined by a material. And you can say a plant, storage location, stock type, uh, stock type meaning uh, what type of stock it is, unrestricted use, etc., etc., and then what production batch it was, that is also possible. Or when you buy purchasing, you may say you bought it in batches, so it could be a batch. And we could also be talking about special stock, right? Special stock, stock might be something like consignment, consignment stock, or it could be even customer stock, you know, stock that you're holding on behalf of the customer. They've already bought it, but you're just keeping it in your warehouse for uh, the, their convenience or whatever. For whatever reason, it could be with you. Yep. So they have specific numbers? Stock management unit, yes. Oh, yeah, definitely. It will be identified by a number. Okay. So when we do physical inventory procedures, what we'll try and do, what we'll actually do is, we'll be tracking actual stock by stock management unit. Right. So we'll be saying, this stock management unit, I expect, will have 500 pieces. But then we'll go tell somebody, go and count that stock management unit and come back and tell me exactly how many there really are. Okay. So this whole physical inventory procedure goes by stock management units. You count everything by stock management units. Okay. So that's the idea. And inventory management actually keeps track of stock by stock management units internally. So that's, that's the whole process. Okay, so it's a non-divisible part of stock material for which a separate book inventory exists. Okay, what we see as the book inventory is really a total of some of these things. So each stock management unit is counted separately. 
that is when you say physical inventory procedures then somebody is going and physically counting those things right so the unit at which this whole thing is managed is the smu stock management unit so each one is counted separately and of course if you find any differences as you will in a large company the differences are also posted per stock management unit now is stock management unit different from stock keeping uh, it could be the same thing also, but stock keeping unit is actually it identifies a specific yeah, product, specific product yeah. in uh, in Costco and yeah. Sam's Club and all that. Sure. But here that may not be. You may have multiple stock management units for the same product. Okay, so I think it's slightly different. Okay, so the basic steps.